Hello, I'm Luke Hatfield. I'm joined by our West Brom correspondent here, the Express and Star, Mr. Matt Wilson. We're at St James's Park. We've witnessed yet another good result for Albion, and you've got to wonder where was this Albion months ago? You do have to wonder that, um, and that is a question that does deserve to be put to the players and also to, to Darren Moore as well, who of course was part of that coaching team. Yeah. But I would say that, and I sort of echo what um, what Moore just said to us in, in the press room, that you can't really dwell on that too much. Yes, you can criticise the board and uh, those in charge mm. for not getting rid of Pardew sooner, but I think on days like this, you have to focus more on the positives. Yeah. And there's one incredibly big positive that is coming out of um, Albion at the end of this season, and that is Darren Moore. Mm -hmm. What he's done to this team is nothing short of remarkable. Um, they'd lost nine in a row when he took over. Yeah. They're now four games unbeaten. He's beaten two Champions League winning managers along that way. And as it stands, as we stand here now, yeah. they're still in the Premier League, just about, yeah. because um, Swansea, I think, are 1-0 down to Chelsea. I mean, that game could finish uh, with, with Swansea nicking a goal, and it could mm -hmm. be a draw, and that would send Albion down, yeah. because they still have to play Southampton and Stoke. Um, but forget about what relegation and staying up, and forget about all of that. Um, what, what he's done, is nothing short of remarkable and I I am now coming round to the idea that he has to be considered for the job yeah um, he has to be because you just look at just look I mean just look at the, what they're doing it's Newcastle w were maybe a bit off today because they're safe and there was a natural um, sort of taking their foot off the gas. Yeah, but the Albion, that Albion squad under Pardew, that when they went 1-0 up, their heads would have dropped at the moment it got into the second half and it got to that, that point when Newcastle were pressing and, you know what, other Albion teams earlier this season would have completely crumbled. There's a resilience there, um, and it's a resilience that we saw at times under Pulis, but even I think it's even bigger. I think it's even better now under under Darren Moore, and, the, and the, it's obvious that they want to win for him. Yeah. It's obvious that he's got everybody, not just the playing staff and the coaching staff, but also the fans and everyone at the club, completely behind him. Um, and there are several reasons behind that, and I've and I've written about it in today's paper, and it's online. And if you want to search that out about, you know, where he's from, what he represents to the club, and you know his history, you can. But I think. The most important thing is his character, yeah. and who he is, not where he's from or, or, or anything else, but how he conducts himself. Mm -hmm. Albion have, in the past few years, you know, they were they were ruled with an iron fist under Tony Pulis, mm -hmm. who was, you know, a um, an effective manager, but perhaps um, quite no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say cruel. That's too that's too harsh, but quite a. Um, you know, a stern. a stern manager. Yeah. Alan Pardew was a disaster, and I think the senior players saw through his um, charade yeah. and his bravado pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. and I think that's why um, they ended up not playing for him. I think they they realised quite early on that you know he asked them to to, to open up and, and play with freedom, but he didn't really give them any sort of guidance on how to do that. Yeah. What Darren Moore has done is he's, he's organised the team. His attention to detail is fantastic, mm -hmm. as is James Shine and Neil Cutler's. Yeah. Um, he's, got, he's given them a clarity, um, and he's given them something to work towards and something to fight towards. And he's, more importantly than that, though, he has given them a person, a character that they, they want to fight for. Mm -hmm. you, know, you only have to look, you have to hear what people like Ben Foster are saying. Like, how can you not love him? How can yeah. you not want to perform for him? There is a reason why they're they're busting their guts out there. Mm -hmm. All of them, and uh, some of those players won't be here next season. Yeah. But all of them, that starting eleven, busted their guts today. Mm -hmm. and there's a reason they're doing that, and it's because and it's because of Darren Moore. And um, listen, I've I've said in the past that I think the job may come too early for him. I think 
look, he's obviously a great man manager, but can mm. he can he build a team in the summer? Because it's going to take a big rebuilding job, and it needs to yeah. take a manager who is used to. Um, okay, this is the player we need in this position, and, and we oh he's a good target. Let's go get him. Mm -hmm. Does Darren Moore have that experience or that ability to do that? And that was my previous um, concerns about giving him the job. Yeah. But the more I see him in action, and you can see him growing as well. Um, yeah. You know, you can see him making decisions, subject, clever substitutes today. Yeah. You know, um, okay, bringing Krakowiak on for Rodriguez to to tighten up, um, you know, bring in Robson Carnu and, um, and Evans on to try and shore things up at the back and, and, yeah. and get that win over the line. And they, he made it at the, at, he made them at the right, right stages, you'd have to say. Yeah. Um, he's growing as well in, in, the, in, in the press room, not that that really matters, um, mm -hmm. to be honest, because Pardew was a very smooth operator in the press room and it never really transpired on into the training ground. Yeah. But you can see him growing and actually there is a case to be had for look, let's 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 let this what is a very promising young manager mm -hmm. let's let him grow at the club and okay in the past we might have thought let's do that as a coach yeah but now there's a genuine case for letting him do it as 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 the manager because look if you can get a good technical director or if you can get some good um, recruitment staff around him yeah. um, or maybe perhaps a, a coach who's experienced uh, uh, with him you know to that experience with building a team he's obviously a fantastic leader of men mm -hmm. and he's great at getting the right things out of people because he's a good man yeah and listen he's completely healed the club mm -hmm. after what has been a com as after what's been a poisonous season yeah. a toxic season it's great being an Albion fan at the moment and the bottom of the table. Yeah. And that's because of Darren Moore. That's and I, I'm now starting to come round to the idea that perhaps he should be considered. I'm not saying he should definitely get the job. Today he was asked about it, he's always asked about it, and he said, Look, I'm not thinking about it. I, I, I know fans, you know, he, he, someone said to him, Look, the fans are going to start calling for you if you keep winning. Yeah. And he said, look, I'm, not, I'm honestly not thinking about it, guys. I'm just thinking about the next game. And I, I know it's a cliche, but and I've said it week in, week out. That's all I can do. Mm. The only concern is, you know, it's six, it's six games. So maybe the team who they've already accepted that they were down. Mm -hmm. They thought, well, we'll just we'll get up for these six games for, for Darren because we love him. And we're already down. So it doesn't really matter. The pressure's off. You know, you don't know how he's going to do. In a, in, a, in a long season environment, in a 46 yeah. game season environment, because it, it, they are going down. I mean, it could happen. <laughs> well, it, it can't, it can't, Luke, because Southampton winning today was, was the nail in the coffin, really. Mm. Because not only do you, are you relying now on Swansea losing all their games, they, but they'd need to draw with Southampton or something, or, yeah. or draw with Stoke. You're relying on so many like individual mm. um, results come actually coming in that it's, it's really unlikely. It's really. It's, it's, look, it's not going to happen, yeah. and, and it's it's so damn it's so annoying because it could they're going to get so close. And I, I, do you know what? I've got every faith they're going to beat Spurs next week because they're, yeah. they're just they just don't look they they look like a different team. Mm. Um, you know, all of them. Livermore was fantastic today. Phillips was fantastic. Dawson was colossus at the back. Yeah. Foster brilliant again. That um, save, by the way, it was, I mean, it didn't get the credit it deserved when it actually happened because a lot of us thought it hit, the, hit the woodwork. Light, but it was lightning quick. An unbelievable save. Lightning quick. Um, I, and yeah, so I, I don't know what, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with this, and as I'm sure the f other fans are, and as I'm, and I'm sure maybe perhaps even members of the board are, mm. you know, do they, do they, do we, you know, take the gamble and go with him? Is it even a gamble? I mean, yeah. it's it's an interesting one, and I'm really intrigued. He has to stay at the club. He yeah. has to, as a coach. And any new manager, if they if, he, if they don't decide to give him the job, any new manager has to be said, look, you've got to keep him. Yeah. Because, okay, they're going to lose some players in the summer, but there's going to be some players there that will stay. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd say maybe half the squad will stay, and they're gonna they're gonna remember this. Yeah. And they're gonna and he's gonna get stuff out of them. Look, I know people will say, well, where was he when we were rubbish under Pardew? But he was in his infancy as a coach, as a first-team coach in that role, and Pardew and John Carver were the, were the men who were in charge. Yeah. What he's done since then is incredible, and he has to stay at the club. And 
you know, I think now, yeah, he has to be considered for the role. I'm not saying he he should get it, but I think, you know, if if, if he if he keeps this up to the end of the season, it's you know, what's football? What is football about at the end of the day? Yeah. Football is about um, having pride in your club, having pride in the team that go out there. Um, for 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 a team that isn't in the big six, mm-hmm. it's not about winning trophies. You know, it would be brilliant if West Brom could, could go to an FA Cup final and yeah. win, or win the FA Cup or win the League Cup. And that is a genuine potentially potential that they can do. But then they're, on, they're never going to win the Premier League. Mm. Um, or it's very unlikely anyway. So what's it about then? Well, it's about community and it's about that feeling of you, you, you're, you're proud of, the, of how your team goes out there and you're proud of what they represent. And Darren Moore represents everything that's good about West Brom yeah. he is, he is, He is somebody that you can cling on to and a character who you can get behind. And actually, you know, yes, of course, this is all being backed up because they're winning. Mm-hmm. But there is a case for let's get good people inside the club yeah the club was divided under Pulis and the fans rightly or wrongly you know were divided they, some people didn't take to him Pardew they were willing I mean you saw it at the start they were, they were really really willing to get behind him because yeah. they wanted to be together and be unified mm-hmm. but it didn't work you know um, and things the cracks soon began to show and the results never came and then obviously he yeah, ended up being a disaster they they want to be unified mm-hmm. and Darren is unifying them and you know there is a massive case now for him to get the job full time and I, I don't I don't know if that's just the danger of riding on the crest of emotion and the wave and maybe those in power have to take themselves back from that and, and, yeah. and think logically but listen if it's working why not that's and it I, d- I mean we'll see we'll see what happens um but he's obviously very astute. He's obviously a good man manager. He's obviously tactically quite quite aware, as are his coaching staff. So, but, um, amazingly, he, he, you know, Albion could be relegated in 10 minutes time or something when Swan, you know, when the Swansea game finishes. But this is such a positive feeling. It's yeah. more, and, and it's weird that on this day, it's the most positive day perhaps of the season. And um, it's the day that they could go down. Yeah. Um, Days like this make you think that Albion can't do a Sunderland. They can't. No, they, they can't. C- Surely the, the, the positive mood now instilled in the club. I mean, I was out there speaking with the fans after the game, and they were celebrating like they'd just got into like the European places. They were. They were. I've never seen them so happy. But that's because they've got their identity back and they've got their club back, and that's because of Darren Moore. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. A lot to be said for that. And they won't do a Sunderland next season. Unless they get the ne- next managerial appointment catastrophically wrong, yeah. but no, I, I don't. I don't expect they will because the momentum he's given them. That's it. So Albion might be going down, but they're going down fighting. And Darren Moore is a man who a lot of fans and a lot of people are starting to think could be doing the job on a permanent basis next season. For all the latest on Albion, make sure you stay with us. At expressingstar.com.